Welcome back, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. Today, I would love to introduce Federico Ayala Filigrana. Federico, on his journey of healing his thyroid gland and how he healed from hypothyroid condition, which later became hyperthyroid, how he went from being nearly prescribed dead to having a thriving life. This is a journey of overcoming doubt and fear. I love this topic. Welcome, Federico, to A Little Less Fear podcast. So nice to finally meet you. Lino, my pleasure. I'm very delighted to be here and speak about this topic that is often times uh, not so available. And just like your journey, I think it's um, it's a powerful message that can help a lot of people. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being open and ready to talk about a topic like this. A lot of people, I feel, are quick to go straight into medications or surgeries rather than to look at other possible, best possible outcomes that could occur or incur in their life if they give in to a different way of thinking, a different way of feeling. And so that's why I'm really interested in learning about your journey. Tell us about your journey with your thyroid. How did this even begin? Yes. So um, uh, basically what happened is that when I turned 14, uh, I started to do a lot of weightlifting. Um, okay. And when I was doing weightlifting, I started to take a lot of creatine and proteins and stuff like that. Um, and then, I mean, that was probably like some of the physical disruptions. I'm not saying that uh, eat, drinking uh, creatine or protein uh, triggers, you know, hypothyroidism, but I'm just describing what was I doing just when I was, when I, I got diagnosed. So I, I really, you know, I really became uh, dependent on sports for uh, happiness because, um, I grew, I, I was born with not such a big thoracic capacity. So sometimes I would struggle for breath when I was like uh, younger, like uh, almost every breath was like, if I wasn't, if, if I was not happy, if there was like tension in the room. It was hard for you to kind of take a take hard breath and it felt really breathe. tight. Yeah. Yeah. So sports like somehow put me in this state in which I was able to breathe. So I became really like uh, hardcore with sports. Okay. And uh, out of that, you know, I, I probably have some injuries and stuff like that, but that was like my medicine. So I started to overdo it. Sometimes I would go to the gym for four hours a day. Wow. straight. I would hit the gym for Holy four hours. Like, <laughs> and I had like a lot of muscle. Uh, so I, 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 for, you know, it was, it was good. Like, uh, I had, you know, my enjoyment with it. Like I would like play Rocky Balboa and, <laughs> ta -ta -ta, and you know, like, <laughs> but at what, what happened when I turned 14 is that my family, uh, separated, um, and all the way, uh, I mean, there, we had had like two or three years of problems all the time at home and discussions and, not understanding so that culminated when i was 14 and uh that affected me a lot emotionally then on top of that i received like another combo which was when i was 14 was the the time which mexico basically all the fantasy that we had as a country because when i was born mexico was a very prosperous and safe country Mm -hmm. And then my family, uh, my family split. And then on top of that, the cartels take over Mexico. Um, then my father started to have some economic uncertainties, like this image that I had of my father as uh, the one that solves everything, like suddenly flipped. I was in the middle of, you know, I was growing like one centimeter a day or something like that. Yeah. And not knowing what was I gonna do with my future, um, feeling uh, even though I was doing sports in in school, I was like not performing so well. So this was the the time in which thyroid hit me. Like um, 
And the first thing that started to happen because of all of these realities that I started to become very anxious, like, okay, now somebody got kidnapped by the cartels and now my family is a mess. Uh, and I'm in the middle of deciding like where to go to high school, um, not having a fixed place also. So what started happening is that I became, I started to became, become very anxious. And then at night I wouldn't stop going to the toilet. Like I would go to the toilet first. I it started with three, three or four times a night. And then it turned to be 15 times per night. Oh, wow. And when this happened, my mom thought, oh my God, just like many of your family, you're becoming diabetic. Right. And that added like a little bit of nerve, like even fear. more stress. Yeah. But then I, I we went to check and uh, like a few weeks after that. And it turned out that I was not diabetic. I was a hypothyroid. And um, yeah, that was when I found out, I found out when I was 14 that I had this condition and I didn't really know what it meant no one really thought like the, the the persons there barely even mentioned that like you know it had something to do with growth and regulation of uh weight and uh i mean but like, it was like a 20 minute or 10 minute talk that they had with me and my parents like i didn't know how bad this could get and then i started to receive receive treatment uh so i started to take sodic level tyroxine um, which is uh, um, a pork hormone that you take that basically makes uh, makes your thyroid you know work in a certain way um, so that's that's how it started you know and what happened when you started to take this uh, it was it, this medication yeah, the first doctor that I went to see, it was like I didn't have a lot of connection to the doctor. Like it was like so, I mean, uh, I don't know. Like it it was so weird because I don't, I don't even remember very well the face of the doctor. Um, so what started happening is that I still felt bad. I still like there was no, it was just like, okay, I thought, take your medicine because if not this is gonna get worse yeah. so at least it didn't get worse horrible uh my concentration was really bad um i couldn't sleep i had anxiety i was sleeping normally two hours per night whoa so the, um, so the so the medication yeah. you weren't you weren't sleeping you had increased anxiety and so, yeah. so basically the medication wasn't helping. I would say it was more like a psychological thing and I could feel the effects of the medication, but no real progress. Maybe a few months later, I started to like sleep a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, what happened is that I started making at the same time adjustments in diets, like, uh, and I was able to, let's say, move from, from sleeping two hours to mm -hmm. sleeping four hours. Um, and then, of course, in during the day, I would be tired the whole time. And what happened later on is that two years later, I was in Austin and my father read a book by um, someone very famous called Dr. Rita Haram. And... Uh, he took me to 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 him in Houston, in Houston, Texas, and I started to be medicated by him. And it was a slightly better approach. I was able to sleep a little bit more. I was able to kind of feel a little bit better, just uh -huh. slightly better, because he was very, you know, at least he gave me like full attention um, from the way that you know, he looked at things, he was okay. doing whatever he could to, you know, keep record of how I was feeling. And so he was like, really good at playing with the measurements. And he was an expert, like he wrote the bestseller. Uh, yeah. And um, 
So I, I can say that it, it gave me time. It, it bought me some time. And this is what this can do. It kind of buys you time because if not, you are probably would have been like pissing at night 15 times per night. Oh my goodness. So when I when I started with doctor uh, with this doctor, um, I would say that at night I would be slightly less anxious. I would still go to, to pee like five times per night. Um, but I would, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but still like my concentration levels, uh, and my capacity to memorize things. Um, so what happens there is that I think that the body, you know, reacted and it kind of kept, kept me half alive, but at the same time, all of these other things were piling up, like no clarity in what your future is going to be uh no real capacity to concentrate uh so yeah you're kind of feeling half alive which is not bad but then all of these other things start to pile up until they hit you yeah so when you're saying that you're starting to not feel alive meaning that you were just kind of feeling like a zombie like kind of just yeah. like going through the daily process okay now i'm just gonna eat now i'm just gonna go back to sleep but you didn't have motivation yeah. I mean, I had motivation for things that teenagers have, like uh, going to prom and, uh, you know, joining the basketball team. I, I mean, it was it looked normal, but uh -huh. but I mean, it looked a little bit normal, but people were always like, mm, you know, he's a little bit slow, okay. you know. Uh, uh, so. You know. It was just enough to get by, but not enough to like fully activate your your full potential, your the full system, thyroid, yeah, you know, um, or to, yeah. And so so that was like the beginning of it, right? Okay, so then this was to treat the hyperthyroidism. To treat hypo, which later hypo. became hypo. hypo. Okay, hypo. Yes. This so this was treating hypo. The doctor was adjusting the medication back and forth. And when did it change yeah. from hypo to hyper? I think it started doing that when I was 20. And uh, what, you know, the way I noticed it is that I, I started to have like little heart attacks at night. So, yeah, like I would feel like, <laughs> and then I would be like, yeah, like at some, some nights I thought, well, I'm going to die. You know, your heart was accelerating. It was beating really, really fast really fast yeah and having like violent like rhythms sometimes um so yeah what happened is that for for six or seven years i kind of felt like half alive and i was thankful for it but then what started happening is that as all of these other things piled up like you don't know you, you don't know what career to choose you're just basically just passing to go to college just barely making the you know the grades and then yeah. when you go to college you are like oh my god like you know what is this because i didn't even choose the career that i wanted i just chose what was there uh -huh. <laughs> and like then all of these things start to started to pile up until i said like so i'm gonna be you know uh today a lot of people are like oh my god i don't want to have a corporate job i want to pursue my purpose for, but for me it was like i was seeing my life as if okay i'm gonna have a corporate job like an x job and on top of that i'm going to underperform so imagine how how motivating that can be oh my goodness so here you are in school and now you're starting to get these palpitations you're yeah. in a field and uh, and studying something that you really don't feel passionate about but you're yeah. going through the motions and then what what happens what keeps happening after that well uh, it starts to get worse because you add up all the emotional and circumstantial baggage of like okay in a few years i have to be independent my parents are concerned like they're not happy with the decisions that i'm taking uh so it, it also in, until there was a point of so much anxiety, which you no matter how much uh, medication you are taking, 
uh, or how good the doctor is, suddenly you can't breathe again. My goodness. So. So what was the next line of treatment after that? So what happened is that when I, I turned like 22, the heart problems started to get worse. Like I would get like a lot of those palpitations. It was like every day, you know? It was probably also oh. followed with sweating and other... Sweat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good that you brought it up. Uh, it's really good that you brought that that point uh, uh, up because the sweating wasn't only sweating. <laughs> this, like, there is something called chromatrophia or something like that. And what started happening is that I would wait, I would wear a white shirt and then... I would wake up at night and see it and it was yellow or red. Oh, red. Wow. Like, especially the area near my heart and my throat, I would like wake up and like, what the hell? So I would be like messing up my shirts all the time. And I was like, oh my God, I got to keep on buying shirts because I'm sweating red or yellow. And I didn't know what that, what, what that was. And very few people, this is also another one in a billion or one in a, at least one in a 10 million disease is called chromatrophia. So what happens is that you can even sweat blue. That's really interesting. So what makes it red though? Why were you sweating like red jello? What was that? I believe it it was toxins like, um, and, uh, you know, and the, the funny thing is that it also smelled like sulfur. Interesting. So, you know, in the past, uh, when I kind of read about it, I found out that, you know, when this happens, you know, this this is also why, you know, uh, a lot of religious associations with bad things. And who knows, maybe toxins rep represent a certain dimension also in which you are living, which is like very toxic, very, sure. um, you know, dark also. Because that. back then I was also... And I don't want to have a religious connotation to it, but if you have probably watched Dr. Masanobu Emoto's work on water, I have. Um, so this is like water starts to, for example, it, it explains how music affects us. Yes. So I back then I realized that, you know, I was listening to a lot of like heavy metal and like very dense music. Mm -hmm. So, and I didn't know that that wasn't helping my process. Like later on, I found out that Chris Cornell from Audioslave committed suicide. Uh, this guy from Linkin Park also did. Um, and then, but you're not aware of it. And uh, so you are sick and at the same time tapping to those uh, dimensions. Yeah. Which are amazing. I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I had a great time listening to that. It was like a catharsis to all my problems. Mm. But then you find out that, hey, you know, the music that you're listening to, most of these people are committing suicide or like, you know, uh, cutting themselves, and, yeah. cutting themselves. So all, everything is connected. It is connected. <laughs> And, and so, but I, but I take it, you made that connection when you started healing, correct? Yeah, like I, I, yeah. I can't imagine that you figured that out right then and there. Like, oh, well, I have to stop this music. You were kind of in it at that yeah. moment. You are not aware and no. your parents are not aware either. And right. probably somebody's listening to, and somebody has this type of disease, like no one is aware because no one teaches us these basic things that music yeah. Music can be for healing, but it, and yeah. and I don't know. I mean, there is no way to force these situations. It's just a right. process, you know. Exactly. So let's go back to the sweating. So you were having a lot of palpitations. You were having a lot of sweating. The the red sweating, and things were getting worse for you. So did you go back to? Were you still seeing the same doctor in Houston at that time? Yeah, I kept on seeing him until I was twenty four. Um, uh, when I turned 24, what happened is that, um, my father took me to, uh, a retreat in called the mountain of peace. Uh, and in the mountain of peace, I met this Kung Fu teacher who also practiced the uh, Chinese medicine and, and meditation like Buddhism. Uh -huh. Um, 
but you know, I associated him more back then to with kung fu and and Chinese medicine because basically he approached me from from that angle, and so I we we just went there because he was teaching uh how to cook in a way that the food preserves the energy like the chi, you know. Oh, I love that. Yes, and. What happened to me is that as soon as I hit the temple, because he actually lives in this temple, uh, an incredible Kung Fu teacher. He's like the the number one guy to mention in Mexico. <laughs> I love uh, this. Amazing, amazing energy. I saw like things that are like unbelievable with him. But yeah, it was like I had arrived to like this like Kung Fu Panda kind of place, which was like um he was doing all of these things and at, and the funny thing was that he wasn't really talking too much about it like um he wasn't like approaching me too much from the oh you're sick of your thyroid it was more like hey why don't let's gonna eat, we're gonna eat this and what would you like to put here yeah. and did you know that ginger you know could be useful instead of garlic um and on top of that i would wake up in the morning and do kung fu with him or tai chi or something like that so i was just going to stay for three days and i ended up st staying more than 10 days with him um and while i was there i didn't take the medication and i felt really alive um and was when that, that the deal for you to go there and not take the medication? No, or did you decided to not take the medication while you're there. No, I actually had the medication on my back in my backpack, and then something like I just felt like I don't know, I'll just like leave it today, and then the next day I, I kind of put it down, I kind of put it down, uh -huh. and then after that, I, I retook the medication, but then I, I, I started to feel weird. And then after a few months, I decided to like drop it when I was 25. I dropped the medication when I was 25 after 10 years of taking it. That's a long time. Yeah. So you decided to stop taking the medication at 25, but you were also, um, I guess, inspired by the energy of this Kung Fu master. Because you were yeah. able to see a different side of yourself, a different side of your health that you hadn't seen before when yeah. this when this uh, Kung Fu master was showing you what could be done with energy, with the energy of food and the energy of nature, I can imagine as yeah. well. And your own energy, too, because I he he met me where I where I was like that was the and this is one thing that I want to say. Uh, um, sometimes we have. We want to create formulas, but he met me where I was and he taught me one style of meditation, which is called the mic the macrocosmic orbit. Macrocosmic uh, orbit? Yes. Okay, go on. I love the sound of that. <laughs> so it's basically, I mean, a lot of meditations go like well, not a lot, but I would say today, um, for example, many, many places like the Art of Living or Sadhguru, the, I mean, they're starting to see the necessity that the current world has for something like Kriya or something like the Macrocosmic Orbit, which is similar to it, but more in the Buddhist, uh, you know, point of view. So it's basically the one where you go up, up and down through all your, your chakras and just start rubbing them. And this creates like an activation, right? And yeah, so that that was a very powerful tool. And when I first started it, it was like it just it felt like really good. But it it didn't show me its power until a few years later. It didn't show me its power for a. a and now I practice something slightly different, but similar, similar in a way. So what happened is that when, when I was 25, you know, on top of all my problems that I, I hadn't finished college, uh, I didn't know what to study. And then um, I went, uh, because I still had some issues sleeping, my intuition told me, um, 
go and volunteer for one year and I wanted to be near the beach. So I lived one year volunteering camping by the beach. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I would love to do that. Wow. <laughs> It was amazing. Like this was like the healing. Like all my sleeping issues faded finally. Until I was twenty five and I did this. Um, I was just getting food from places and like getting a a place to put my tent and I, I did that for a year. Um, so I started to really go deep into the meditation and doing you know an activity. Federico, what um but still what you, yeah what do you think it was about the beach like being there for a year that helped you start sleeping again what was it about that um it it i think it was the elements the contact with the elements you know uh in in Buddhist, in all the tradition in all the spiritual traditions there is this this contact with the elements that help you balance something so for me, a lot of it was this contact with the wind and with the salt of the water. And at the same time with the earth, because you are touching the earth. Yes. Yeah. And now so there, there is like a whole story, a proven story of how much just being in contact with earth, like helps you de-inflammate all of your body. Absolutely. So, yes. Yes. It's called um, grounding, correct? Grounding. Yes. I mean, and this is scientifically proven, like there is ample evidence of this. Well, because we're electromagnetic humans and we need that charge from the earth. And especially if you have your shoes off and whether you're touching grass or mud or dirt or the sand or the ocean, you're having contact with the earth and the earth is then healing you through its vibrations. So yeah. innately, intuitively, your intuition said, do this. And you yeah. went and you followed your intuition. You know, I'm actually really impressed that you followed your intuition and that you had even an awareness of your intuition, given the condition that you were in at that time. So I, I think that's really incredible that like you're like, OK, I'm going to go do this. And so in yeah. that intuition, your your higher self knew that you desperately wanted to be healed and that you were trying everything that you could. And the yeah. one thing you hadn't tried is earth healing. Have, getting yeah. the, the healing elements of natural mother earth to go in through your body's system vibrationally and to heal you from inside and, and outside. I mean, all your complete aura, your energetic, all of it. And yeah. so, so you were there for a year, you started to sleep. And as a lot of people yeah. know, when you start to sleep, things start to heal. And so you finally started sleeping and you finally started to come into a wellness version of yourself. When you were at the beach for a year, did you take this medication as well, or did you leave it at this point? You left no, it. No, I, I was no longer taking the medication, and I was feeling very well. I mean, I had, I had already like a norm and more than normal like energy. Like compared to the average people, I would already have already more energy than the average people back then. And I and back then I still hadn't faced. I still hadn't healed like completely. Um, I knew I healed from thyroid uh, after that. My healing came after that. I mean, I already felt like some sort of normal, but I kind of received a proof of the healing later on, like a physical proof. What was what was um, that physical proof? That manifested in a... In a <laughs> All right. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll arrive to that right now. Um, but what happened in that year at the beach is that I met the mother of my daughter. Um, and uh, we were not together. We, we, we actually just were together that year that was by the beach. Um, but I've kept com contact with, with my daughter. Uh, and I actually lived some years in Germany because of her. Um, so that, that, you know, made things a little bit complicated, but at the same time, it kind of gave me the strength to keep on pushing, to not like give up, you know, uh -huh. because there is always this element that makes you want to like, you know, so it was hard because for example, when I went to, to Germany, 
I went and I worked uh, delivering food, you know, or at a restaurant. And uh, so I had to face many things. Um, and then what happened is that just at that time, because of the amount of confusion that I had, it was like, why is this happening to me? The country way, way, went the way the way it did. Uh, I have no future ahead of me, no clear future. Uh, now uh, the mother of my girl is leaving me. Uh, you know, uh, my relationships were a mess. Uh, I didn't know how to, you know, I, I would sometimes like have, you know, uh, good relationships, but I, I couldn't sustain them somehow. Mm -hmm. And... When I was 26, I, I entered another, a, a big crisis because of this, because of the rupture between the mom of my, and, and me. And, and, and I said, I, I got really depressed again. And I remember that I bought like 20 packs of cigarettes and I started like smoking and smoking, and smoking. I closed the room in my mom's house, which was ridiculous at age 26. And I just kept on smoking and smoking. My mom would be like, what are you doing? What like?" And I would be like, leave me alone, you know? And were you smoking out of anxiety? What happened is that... Were you smoking out of anxiety or were you hoping to somehow... Depression. A depression, okay. I was like completely torn by the situation. Sure. Uh, my emotional situation. And what happened is that I really hit the bottom there. I started to like spit blood after a few days of like continuously smoking, mm -hmm. I started to like spit blood. And at that moment, I I really said, well, you know, either you get up now or you go because like, I, you, you, I don't want to be a burden to everyone. And what happened there after seven days of smoking, like from morning till dawn, I felt this huge necessity to reconnect to the meditation in a deeper level that the Kung Fu teacher had given me. Uh -huh. um, hello? Yes. Um, so what happened is that I really closed the room and I meditated for easily 48 hours without noticing it. Wow. Like, like I just lost complete sense of time and space and what happened there was crazy which I was able to have a thyroid orgasm like an orgasm in like I I experienced something even more blissful than you know an orgasm that the normally one we know where I felt this huge power just coming from the thyroid um and from then on I things really changed. I started to meditate every day. I would wake up every day at five in the morning. And uh, I used to go to this amazing tropical place that is the city of Villahermosa, which is like full of crocodiles. And it looks like the Lion King uh, <laughs> sunset. Uh, or sunset. Oh, I mean, I was just delighted and thankful to be there. Yeah. Uh, well, our mind normally is always thinking, no, you know, I should go to New York or I should be in Los Angeles or I should be in this. And I was just so thankful to be in this place, you know. So I, that was a, an important, but the real sign came one year later when I decided to take a 12 day fasting program. Um, which I, I, I also, it's, I, if I'm mentioning it, it's not like part of my program right now, but it could be a tool if things sure. are, are not working out. So what happened in the 12 day program was that at day seven of the fasting, there was a line of red and black things that came from my heart all the way to the thyroid, like burp, like burps of bubbles, uh, very kind of disgusting and like but on the seventh day my my body was just getting all that out yeah, and from that day on I I really 
that was it. <laughs> um, that was on the seventh day that you started when on you started the seventh day. The, the seventh day is when all those toxins started coming out. What made you want to fast? Was it was it a retreat that you joined or a doctor recommendation or is just something? Was it another intuitive budge that you had? Hey, you know what? Try fasting. The thing, what happened is that my father did it for a shorter time. And I have to admit that back then, my father was a huge support because he was like um, also learning a lot about how to heal and stuff like that. And when he did it, I said, you know, I also want to do it. It was more like a challenge. I already felt like with good energy and, but still I, it was like, you know, I hadn't completed my degree. Um, I hadn't, I had no vision of what was coming in my life. And uh, I guess that sometimes you want to go into those um, dimensions just to kind of feel something like you're doing something good, you know, sure. but I was surprised. I wasn't expecting to have like that sign, you know, yeah. uh, and since then, things really turned way, way, way better for me. Like, what was included in that fasting? Uh, was it were you drinking water? Were you was any? I mean, what was it? Water only, or and no food whatsoever? Mainly water with uh, some minerals and a little bit of fruit juice. That would be. Uh, and then you know, the first one or two days, you eat fruits and the last one or two days you eat a little bit of fruit so yeah but it was um it was this was in the yucatan jungle in a very very beautiful place and uh yeah it was a very special moment but that's that's what i got i mean there are many many things that happen during that fasting you know uh including like very lucid dreams which is a part that I wanna I wanna touch also with you, which is I think is important uh, because it's becoming, it's also have something to do with this, but you know step by step, I didn't start to notice, you know how everything is intertwined in a way, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely intertwined for sure, and so when you <laughs> started getting the you went through the fasting twelve days, correct? You said it was twelve days. So yeah. you're done with the fasting. What was the next in your yeah. healing journey after that? What was the next? Was it the lucid dreaming? No, no lucid dreaming. And I've just been exploring it more the last two years. Uh huh. Um, but after that, I really didn't. I, I kind of stopped. Like I didn't like, um, you know, push myself to any hard, uh, like, uh, spiritual training or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, all of, you know, I also want to specify that I don't want to, you know, just say this is a spiritual, it's a connection of everything. And in, in, in a way it's also your will, your determination. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that's how, you know, things started to manifest for me. And at some points I took breaks because I think it's necessary also not to, to take one challenge after the other. So I think after that, I just took some years in which, you know, I didn't uh, feel like I needed any other challenge. I finished my degree. Uh, Congratulations. <laughs> in, Congratulations. I finished as an engineer. That's excellent. Industrial engineering, yeah. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not fully working on that. Mainly I took, uh, you know, my my degree, I took it because uh, it was an opportunity for me to work and at the same time study. Um, but after that, I really started to get in contact with plant healing and, you know, healing, uh, also collaborating. Uh, five years ago, I, I collaborated for the biggest um, uh, Heal Your Thyroid uh, place in mexico is the only one and it's actually having hundreds of people uh testimonials of people who have recovered from the condition 
Mm -hmm. um, and in the U.S., there are a few, a few people on Instagram that you can reach and that are already having a lot of testimonials. Yeah, but what I think is that, you know, when you feel the calling from somebody, yeah, when you resonate with the person, this is where you have to go. Definitely. Independently of your mental constructions or so, because sometimes you, you say, no, but I would rather go with this guy or I would rather go to that guy. But if you resonate with it, this is where you have to go. If you resonate with it, that's your intuitive calling. That's your true intuition pulling you. Yeah. That's true resonance yeah. right there. Yeah. And so then you took some time off, which I love that you pointed that out because you can be on this wellness healing journey, but if you're constantly pushing at it and pushing at it, I mean, you're not really allowing yourself to really start living that new life that you've worked so hard for. So at some point yeah. it's like, lay down, lay down for a minute, take a deep breath and start enjoying what you've created, everything that you've worked for and start living yeah. your life a, a little more fruitfully. And so yeah. you were able to put that part down for a bit. You went to school, you completed your degree, industrial engineering, and then you now you're helping people doing during their thyroid activation is what you call it, right? Healing thyroid activation. Yeah. Activate your thyroid, activate your voice too. Uh, because it's me, a journey tell me more about birth. that. Activate your thyroid and activate your voice. Yes. So before I go into that, I just wanted to add one one thing. And one thing is that uh, surprisingly enough, I had always been mediocre at school, but I uh, I became the best, the you know, the best, in, you know, number one in, in engineering. Like I graduated with the highest GPA that someone could graduate, like really. <laughs> That's excellent, Federico. Heck yeah. That's awesome. It's like, it's like all those struggles yeah. and everything so that you had gone through. That was through. like you were saying that. What's that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, That was me harvesting already some of the fruits. And it was also impo yeah. important to take the break, like you said. So coming back to activate your thyroid and activate your voice. Um, So I named it that way because I wanted I wanted it to be like more specific than healing, you know? So many of these things are just activations. And they are. Yeah, it's an activation to to your voice. So many people with that, I mean, uh, this this is in, um, I'm talking for people that know about uh, alternative healing and people that don't know. The people that know, they know that it's associated with not speaking your truth. Mainly, there are many other associations with the Vishuddhi chakra or the thyroid. Yeah. Uh, but the main one is going to be that you are not speaking your truth. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. the world is eating at you and you are not able to find the courage. So, for example, in yoga or meditation, they normally... When you are meditating upon this point, there is about calling in your courage. You know, it's the point of the vacuum. Also, is the point of, uh, for example, in in India or in the ancient traditions, is also associated to Shiva, who is the destructor of all the concepts that you have, and the creator of the new paradigm. So. At the same time, most of the toxins that we have end here. It's very weird that we start to get toxins going all the way to your brain. Mm -hmm. So the thyroid receives one of the last, um, it's basically the last filter that you have for all of these toxic emotions. Because when they start to go to your brain, you start having like mental disorders. So as you're going to notice, like kids normally are not having mental disorders because many of their organs are still working properly. But when your toxins start to go beyond the thyroid, it also is associated with Alzheimer, uh, schizophrenia, all of these issues too. 
So why the thyroid is mainly like uh, mostly uh, women being affected is because women often are, um, especially in countries like Mexico, they are kind of put down or there is a lot of fear about your work and, you know, the macho culture. But even in the United States, there is a report that says that one of one out of every eight women will have a problem with the thyroid. And mm -hmm. maybe. It is because sometimes women want to, you know, keep on having the bond of a relationship. They they choose not to, you know, uh, speak you up know, for to themselves disrupt or, what they... or to break. Uh, yeah. So they choose more like, let's keep it at a certain level, because if not, everything is going to fall apart. And you know there is an element of uh, that could be rational about it, you know. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I also think that we have to find a way to be spiritual and to uh, speak our truth with enough wisdom, not to be breaking the bonds that we have with people. So this is going to be a big, it's a big area to cover. How can you speak your truth? And not necessarily make everyone run away from you. It's learning how to speak your truth. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really interesting that you brought up the fact because, uh, I mean, I was thinking about that earlier, how because, how it affects women more often. And it definitely makes sense because women, I mean, throughout history have been kind of just quieted down a lot more because of it being yeah. more of a machismo society and across all cultures and so yeah. i mean if if women are constantly not able to speak their truths uh things around their throat area is going to be affected and i mean in the thyroid being one of the easiest things to be affected because of stress yes. or being quieted down and not being able to live their truths authentically and that really especially when you're you're especially when women are trying to be someone that they're not and they're doing it for the family or for their spouse and not putting their needs first i mean they feel that they can't put their needs first at that point and they can't even speak their needs at that moment i mean no wonder yes. disease starts to develop in that area that's really powerful right there it is it is um yeah because we have a lot of this conditioning of like if i say my truth uh then people are going to run away. But then this is, you know, this is why my book is called The Voice in the Labyrinth, because it's not like we were born with the tools to speak our truth a lot. Like, there has to be a very big, you know, a drastic change in the way you view things, because if I view, if I look at you and 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 uh, I am in a defensive mode, um, speaking my truth is going to hurt you. True. If you're in a defensive mode, for sure, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so even, even learning how to speak, even if it's the volume of your voice and how yeah. you're presenting that voice, I mean, that's a lot of it. How a lot of it goes with it. <laughs> oh my goodness so how do we connect with our boys how do we for example in the in mexico has an incredible supportive tradition that helped me to see like what is this like because okay i had already healed physically but i i, I was still seeing things with a certain eye you know with a certain perspective so in the local traditions of Mexico, there was something called Círculos de Palabra Bonita or Círculo de Palabra Dulce. And this is part of the whole traditional uh, Temazcal setting of singing, of in actually what are you doing in Temazcal, which is the Mexican sweat lodge? Uh, you are speaking your truth. Yeah. They would give you, you know, the, you know, the little thing. And actually, 
it was a it's a very interesting process because when you are taking this uh sonata, I don't know how to say it in English. Um wait, which 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 word? You take sonaja, like sonaja. You, it's they a, give um, you your the sonaja is like a um uh -huh. like a not a maraca, right? It's similar, it just makes this shik 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 sound. Yeah. Well, in Temascal, which is the, you know, like you could call it sweat, sweat lodge, but it's not that. It's much more than that. And actually, it would just take one other or 10 other sessions to explain what it is. But when they give you the the, the talking the stick or in, uh -huh, and you do this, you're speaking what's happening to you. And then people notice even like how you're shaking your hand. Oh, well, how interesting. So in a way, for example, for me, I've been going to Temascal every single, almost every single week for the last four years. And it has been a process of learning how to speak my truth, learning also how to listen to others. Um, and I cannot be more thankful for the process that I've been having. On top of that, on top of learning that, the fire really facilitates. You see, normally when we're speaking to people, uh, we need sometimes like, you're gonna laugh at this one, but we need a plant normally to talk with people or we need a alcohol, which is a plant or a mushroom. Uh, alcohol yeah. is a mushroom, that's what it is. So, if you notice, people need coffee, a plant, to talk to each other. Or they yeah. need <laughs> alcohol to talk. Or they need a, a cigarette, right? Because if not, there is something kind of weird about it, you know? But what happens when you are in front of the fire in the Temascal is that you are in front of something so purifying. And you are really being cleansed, you know? in a way so speaking your truth there i'm not gonna say it's like a magic one i'm not gonna say go to a temascal and then you're gonna learn how to speak your truth sure. but it invited me to see that speaking your truth is also connected with being really aware of what other people are saying that is so true when you speak your truth, because you're speaking your truth, you are no longer you're no longer clouding yourself with walls or even personal judgment. So if you are then speaking your truth, you are allowing yourself to actually listen and be present with other people. And as they speak, you are fully able to listen at that point, because listening is yeah. also a feeling. And at that point, you can feel the vibration of the other person communicating to you and in what element they are in and really take in their energy and give them your energy un with undivided attention at that point. That really makes sense. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. I love that. Yeah. And I love the fire element, Federico, as you're saying that I, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm like, have I ever spoken in front of a fire like that? Like that sounds really incredible using all the elements of the earth. And I really think it's fascinating that you brought up the fact that people need a plant to talk. Say, well, what if what other elements can we use that the earth provides that we can also activate our throat chakra or thyroid or thyroid activation and find ways to communicate using other elements other than what people have been doing for thousands and thousands of years? That's the most easiest, which is a plant. And in the fire element, also with you, the water element, when you were in at, at the ocean for a whole year, you're using the water element at that point to communicate with your body, mind, and soul and bring it all together. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah in Temascal, they actually play with the four elements. Like they, they actually bring in water, like in the form of steam. And, you know, also they do like this waving inside so it's a play of elements but mainly is is fire which is penetrating through our barriers you know people are all the time having these walls are building these walls and then there is this excess of personal identification and when you are to identify with yourself are you truly listening mm -hmm. 
So this is the point that a lot of people like it takes a lot of guidance because you know there are many problem programs that are talking about like how to disidentify for your from yourself. And if somebody is listening right now, that sounds that sounds crazy. And the thing is that it's not what we think it is. And I think it has to be met, you know, at a level. You're not going, you know, you're going to have to have somebody sometimes to carry you to, to cross the river. And what happens is that you're never going to be completely like self-de-identified, but you're going to be able to listen more. So a lot of people are today uh, concerned about how to uh, be more conscious, but it's I think it's more important to cultivate awareness because if we cultivate awareness, what happens is that we certainly will arrive at certain levels of consciousness. Right. Yes. You know. Absolutely. It's all about awareness at this point. Federico, what an amazing journey you've had. Thank you so much for all these gems. You, you've you given me all kinds of little gifts today. I really appreciate the awareness that you've given me today. <laughs> for real, this is really a true gift. Thank you so much. Federico, how can our viewers, our watchers, and our listeners get a hold of you and your, your coaching program that you do to activate your thyroid and activate your voice? Yes. So um, the easiest way is through my Instagram, um, which is new. I just, I just like started you know, taking in again people after working for Heal Your Thyroid. So right now, um, I could I could put it in the chat, or I could, or I don't know if you have my Instagram. So I don't I know. Do. How I do. I have it. Do yes, this. and I'll and I'll and I'll also be putting it in the show notes and everything. Yeah, definitely. So that's the best way. Just reach out and send me a message. Um, I have just a few things on my Instagram, but the mo I, well, the way I want to do this is just, you know, have conversations with people like you. I don't want to be just like posting stuff like because I have a lot of things to do. So this is one thing that I will tell people that want to reach out, just reach out, send a message. And uh, it's a personal thing. It's not... I, I don't like, uh, I'm more of a traditional guy who likes to, you know, just come and reach out. And if we have a, a, a chat and you resonate with it, we go forward with this, you know. Very beautiful journey of yours and beautiful future ahead. Thank you for sharing your incredible life and how you went from struggling with your thyroid at 14 years old to completely thriving now and doing really well for yourself really keep it up keep it going and this is really an incredible motivating journey of yours keep sharing your story you never know who you can motivate and whose life you're changing just by telling them what you've gone through and what you're still going through and and it's just really a light your light is starting to shine and keep shining your light along the path keep going thank you lino i do oh um wait a second um i actually have to go um but it's been a pleasure. Like the hour went so fast. <laughs> uh, but I'm very, I'm really thankful that we had this space of time to talk to each other. You know, uh, it's been fantastic. Um, yeah, feel free to reach out, everyone, and I'll write you an email. Uh, you know, as soon as as possible. I Great. guess uh, I did have a poem to share. Do you have a few minutes, or I was actually oh yeah. Minutes? Okay, great. Let's let's just finish this off here. I wrote it in Spanish and then I'll translate it in English. It's really short and then we'll uh we'll stay connected after this. Okay, okay. Yes, can you just give me 20 seconds, please? Sure. Uh, I need to send a message because it, it kind of went a little bit uh Oh, went over. Sure, yeah. no worries. Sure, so just happened. 20 seconds. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I was expecting this to be more like an hour, but you see, <laughs> an hour flies like, like a bird, right? It sure does.
Okay, uh, I need to turn off my camera just quickly. Uh, please, um, one sec. Uh, all right, all right, Lino. Please. All right, okay, great. Yeah, this is really short here. So this poem here that I wrote, thank you so much for motivating me. I really appreciate it. So here it is in Spanish and then I'll say it in English. Um, okay. Hierbas encima de mi cuerpo fueron la de las deudas de resentimientos de mi cuerpo, sobre mi cuerpo, entre mis venas, ahogando mi salud con lágrimas, lágrimas hechas de miedo, Colgué mis paraguas y empecé a ver la verdad de la vida. Mi vida nació cuando dejé de guardar dolores. Renací cuando empecé a enamorarme de la vida, de mi cuerpo, de mi pasado, de mis cicatrices y de ayer. Ahora las hierbas encima de cuerpo florecen de nuevo. And so, in English, weeds over my body was the debt of resentment of my body, over my body, and in between my veins. In drowning my health with tears, tears made of fears, I hung up my umbrella and began to see the truth of life. My life was born when I stopped saving pain. I was reborn when I fell in love with life, with my body, with my past, with my scars, and with yesterday. Now weeds over my body have bloomed into flowers. And that's it. <laughs> I get pumped up, I swear. That's it. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Federico. Oh my God. It resonates a lot with this experience. And bloom. yeah, you, you felt know, that your, your thyroid can bloom. This is what I'm telling people here. This can bloom. It can bloom. Your thyroid can turn into a beautiful flor, a beautiful flower for sure. And you are a beautiful flower, Federico. Muchas gracias. You too, Thank Lino. you for being on a little less <laughs> weird podcast. Looking forward to keeping in touch. Keep going. Keep in touch, Shine man. on. All Muchas right, gracias. Man. Cuídate. See you.